Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Patient Convert podcast. Justin not here and really excited about the topic today. It's been a little while since we recorded, and we have one of our main conferences coming up on the American Alliance of Orthopedic Executives that is coming up here in just a couple of days for us. And with that, just recently actually did a webinar on orthopedic marketing strategies to get more patients booked for practices and really wanted to do a podcast kind of piggybacking off that. If you were able to attend, I appreciate you attending. If you weren't able, go over to the website and make sure you check it out under our webinars area. There will be an evergreen recording that will be going up there. But really wanted to put it in a podcast form and kind of go over some of the stuff that was covered on that webinar. But just really talk about from an orthopedic growth standpoint and what's really big right now in kind of 2023 and just what we see as trends moving forward and talk around that. If you have listened to us in the past, you may know orthopedics is one of our biggest subspecialties of focus that we work with mid to large size orthopedics is kind of a bread and butter sweet spot, medical vertical and has been for over a decade of our agency. And so we spend a lot of time here and have marketed a lot of top practices around the United States and help them grow from a patient acquisition standpoint. So really wanted to kind of walk through what is really working to great effect right now that we see that you should definitely be focused on moving forward. I think what makes orthopedics really unique and one of the reasons why we love it so much, I mean, medical in itself is very unique and presents opportunities and challenges versus other verticals and business sectors to market in. What makes orthopedics unique is the subspecialties inside of a specialty. You've got spine surgeons, knee surgeons, upper extremity surgeons, hand surgeons, on and on and on and on, which is really unique to this subspecialty because you really not only have to be able to look at being a leader in your space as an orthopedic clinic and orthopedic surgeon, but if you want to be the hand surgeon in your area, it's a whole nother layer to the onion. And so how do we address all of these different things in terms of the ailments that patients are searching to get treatment on, the subspecialties that physicians want to focus on as surgeons, and everything in between. So I, that's one of the things that I absolutely love about orthopedics is there's just so many different layers and most most are multi, multi-location multi too. So you got different geographical areas, different subspecialties, different conditions and treatments that range an entire gamut of spine and back to hip, to knee, to shoulder, to hand and wrist, ankle and foot and ankle, all of that different type of stuff. And so there's a lot of different things to kind of take into consideration when you're building out a marketing strategy. Probably first and foremost, and one of the most important things is SEO and search is how do we take our website as an ortho group to the next level and actually have it create value and be a patient appointment engine for us and for our surgeons to get more patient appointments booked. That's probably one of the biggest things ever everybody out there listening cares about the most. And so really want to walk through kind of what that typically looks like, how we address it, where we see success, the kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly of the whole entire thing. So when it comes to SEO, again, peeling back the onion and looking at what makes orthopedics so unique is understanding how patients are finding you. There are a few different ways when they sit down in front of their computer with some type of specific ailment that they are searching for a solution like what you provide as an orthopedic practice. One's condition specific. That's going to be like knee pain treatment near me, herniated disc treatment, frozen shoulder treatment near me, that type of thing. So it's going to be condition or treatment specific. So they're looking for a specific thing that ails them or a specific treatment that can fix that can, the thing that's ailing them. The other side of it is provider specific. And that's the subspecialty stuff that I was mentioning. So that could be like Dr. John Smith. And so winning your kind of your brand name, so to speak, of all of the different physicians and surgeons that are in the practice. This is where I think and we'll talk about this in a little more detail. I think this trips a lot of people up because that's when it comes to the provider side of things where a lot of people stop. And I think that that's a big mistake in terms of an opportunity area that we often see. Next is this provider subspecialties like knee surgeon near me or knee surgeon Atlanta or knee surgeon Orlando, so on and so forth. 
And that is a really big bucket to win. And a lot of times I think that gets missed when we do an audit. Like a lot of times I'll do an audit for an ortho group, have the assumptions that their website's just killing it. And you go in and you do an audit and the top pages on the website are the physician pages and the top keywords on the website are the physician's names. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you are looking at it at face value, the website in terms of the value it's creating is primarily being created just by those physicians being physicians in the area for a long time and people specifically knowing their name. You're going to win those battles regardless. I mean, over time, you're going to win that battle as the physician is more, gets more well-known in the area, they get more referrals, all that type of stuff. But what you really want your website to be winning on is not the stuff that it can easily slam dunk win on, like the name of the practice, the name of the physician. It's the things that people are searching for that are the, the, of the highest level of competitiveness. And that's, again, those treatment-specific and condition-specific and subspecialty-specific keywords. How you do that is really through two primary things, or there's a couple. It's treatment and conditions pages, your location pages, and your Google business profiles. The Google business profiles is really, really big, and most everybody knows it was called Google My Business just a few months back. Now it's called Google business profiles, which is getting used to having to say after Google My Business being what it was for so long. But those are what you see in the map pack. That's really, really critical because it is Google's major focus on local search. And thusly, it has become insanely important to winning local search. The thing is, though, you can go in and list all of your services inside of each of your Google business profile pages, as well as your physician pages. The biggest, most important thing is the conditions and treatments pages associated with it, for sure. And that's why you really want to attack it from both ends. You want to make sure your Google business profiles are really built out and completed, but you also want to make sure you're spending time and attention on building reputation on that with the providers of like rate or eight, those types of things. But you also want to make sure on the other side that you're building out your conditions and treatments library so they can associate back to the fact that you do offer hip replacement surgery or you do treat hip pain or you do frozen shoulder treatment, whatever it may be, rotator cuff repair. Having those individual conditions pages on the website is what Google business profiles are going to crawl and associate in terms of local rankings. If you've done a search and you've ever seen Google business profiles, like their website mentions, whatever the highlighted keyword is you are searching for, that is why it's so critical to have that information and especially specific information on your website about that. It's going to be a big major driver in local search to winning over local health systems and other private practices that are in your area. That leads me to the other topic that I've hit on a few times during talking about Google business profiles. And that is individual treatment and conditions pages for each thing that you want to rank for. And that's a really, really critical process to go through. What I always tell people, and if you ever listen to any of our content, you've heard me say it like a thousand times, but if you want to rank for it, you need a page for it. And that is a 30,000 foot view to look at a lot of kind of foundational, fundamental, no secret sauce around it, SEO approach to local search. If you do a local search for like tennis elbow or frozen shoulder specialist, anything like that in a near me situation, you're probably going to see those first set of organic searches are going to be local providers like health systems and private practices that have very specific content to those treatments and conditions that you're looking for. And that tells you on its face that if you want to even be competitive, you really need to build really strong content out. And that's how we approach it for our clients is it's looking at top down, what do they care about the most in terms of this, their subspecialties of focus and what they want to do more of, but also on the other side, time and experience being what it is, say with our agency, for instance, is understanding these are the things that patients are looking for the most. So let's start there and take a bite of the elephant at a time, so to speak, and work our way through the development of a powerful content library that can be a huge traffic engine over the long term and promoting increased organic search, organic visibility, and ultimately more patients in a local search environment for these ortho groups. And making sure you have a good process in place in terms of as you open new locations to building out those location pages, Google business profiles, 
all those different types of things and building reputation on them being a really, really critical part of the process as well. And so the other thing to not forget about, and I actually just did a video on this recently, if you go to our YouTube channel, is multi-location. If you're a multi-location orthopedic group, your location pages are really, really critical to the success of your orthopedic or your orthopedic SEO program because you have what I call a franchise model, so to speak, on your website in terms of the SEO and how it can be structured. What I mean by that is you can't go to your herniated disc page or your bunion surgery page and just list out the geographical area you're located in if you're in multiple different geographical areas. You can't just fill the title tag with all of that different geographical areas and then hope to rank really well. You really need a lot of that to be driven primarily through your individual location pages. And that's why it's really critical that you spend a lot of time and effort focusing on building out killer locations pages and interlinking and all of those different types of things that go into building out a killer individual location page to rank really well for all of the near me treatments conditions that you want to rank for and all of the conditions library that you've been working on building is you got to have Google business profiles associated with location pages and those location pages associated with conditions and treatments. That is kind of the fundamentals of doing well as you continue to grow both regionally and across multi-state if you're an MSO or anything like that. Moving forward, that's going to be a really, really critical setup for you. Next on the other side of it, so we've talked pretty in depth about the SEO side so far. So want to turn our attention to the advertising side of things. Advertising, especially in what was for such a very long time, orthopedics being really reliant on referrals. I mean, for years and years and years, orthopedic practices, everybody referred to you and you took care of those patients and that was it. And a lot of things have changed and it's opened the door for really strategic and really powerful and effective advertising strategies in a direct to consumer marketing scenario. It seemed foreign uh, 10 years ago to be running ads for an orthopedic group because it's like, who would self-refer for an orthopedic non-acute type of injury that they may be dealing with? And that has substantially changed over the years to the benefit of a lot of traditional direct-to-consumer marketing mediums like paid advertising. Probably the most effective of the paid advertising platforms that are out there right now is Google ads. Most everybody knows who's listening, what Google ads are. What makes Google ads so effective and so powerful is what I call the search intent or buyer intent that sits behind it. What I mean by that is versus a lot of other advertising channels out there, say we can pinpoint social media, for instance, like using social ads like Facebook and Instagram to drive orthopedic patients. Most of that, if it's remarketing aside. And what I mean by that is like people who come to your website and then you remarket them with a video or something on their Facebook, all what we call cold audience building. So doing geographical based ads or gender based ads or activity based ads, like they're into hiking or something like that based on their activity on Facebook and other different demographic and interest points that you can target. They are probably or could be unfamiliar with your brain. So you're pushing advertising in front of them, whether they want it, need it or not. And especially in an orthopedic scenario, it's very much tied to them needing orthopedic care. So whether it's an, an athlete of some type that gets a non-acute orthopedic injury that they may have torn something, fractured something, that type of thing. Maybe it's somebody a little bit older that may have wear and tear on their knees or some joint that needs to be replaced, so on and so forth. So you really want to position yourself when that need arises, whether the pain gets more than they want to deal with, or they're on the football field on a Friday night and they have some non-acute injury that occurs that they need to see an ortho specialist for it, that type of thing. Facebook and Instagram ads make assumptions that Google doesn't have to. And what I mean is if somebody sits down and they're looking again for X, Y, or Z type of condition treatment, or even like orthopedic urgent care near me, that type of thing, 
they're what we call further down the funnel in terms of ready to book as a patient. And that is the lowest hanging fruit type of situation. Because if they're going and they're looking for hip pain treatment or a hip pain specialist, they are somewhere further along in the education funnel than just presenting them an ad for an orthopedic clinic and hoping at some point they're going to need you and they will remember and they'll come back and they'll book. Where in search, you present yourself at the moment of need when they are looking for the solution, condition, and treatment that you provide as an orthopedic practice. And then you can drive them to the website. You can educate them, provide your differentiators and your value, and then get them to convert and book an appointment. Or if they've come and maybe an issue hasn't arised yet that would require orthopedic care, you can now remarket them just like you could with social ads or anything of the latter. And that's what is really, really nice about Google ads and why we always recommend and we do with our clients start there in terms of auditing or rolling out Google ads campaigns. And some of the best things to focus on in Google ads campaigns are going to be specialty specific. Obviously, if you do have gaps in the schedules for some of your providers, and there's typically a, usually a few providers in the practice that are really in tune with their patient volume, maybe you got a hand surgeon that really wants to grow his patient population, so on and so forth, that may make a lot of sense, just kind of in terms of working directly with the physicians, or you could have say foot and ankle, you just brought on a foot and ankle surgeon and you need to beef that area up in terms of their sur surgical schedule and the mid levels. That is a good way to focus as well. But at a top line level, focusing on joints, joints is really big. And so is some things like sports medicine. We've had a lot of success over the years in sports medicine growth. And then the other big one, which we've talked about a couple of times is the orthopedic urgent care, orthopedic walk-in clinic side. That because it is immediate need and you need to stay top of mind until that need arises, it is just like a traditional urgent care model. When they need it, they're going to search, they're going to look geographically, and they're going to look for the people that provide it, and they're going to make and execute a decision really, really quickly. So you need to be there both in map ads, you need to be there in search ads, you need to be at a bunch of touch points. So when somebody's looking for an ortho urgent care, you can get them into the clinic and get them in same day or next day versus them going to a general orthopedic or general urgent care that may not address orthopedics like an orthopedic practice could. And that's why surge ads are really effective in the ortho urgent care side of things too. And make sure you have a workflow of not only self-appointment booking capabilities, but you're taking phone calls, especially on the urgent care side, phone calls will be really big because again, the need arises, they want to get a question answered and can you help it? Can you help take care of the issue I'm dealing with? And then bam, they'll show up through your doors in relatively short order. The other side is demand side platforms, what they're called DSP platforms have become really, really big in recent years. Most marketers that are out there or even C-suite people that are maybe listening, healthcare executives I've heard of, programmatic display advertising, OTT, CTV, all of that type of stuff has really become very, very popular and for good reason because they are a very, very effective way to reach patients across multiple devices and in their home for a whole lot cheaper than doing the traditional kind of TV, television, commercial style ad that is expensive and can be very difficult to track back from an attribution standpoint. What you can do with a DSP platform is multiple different things. You can do geofencing, which means that you can target people based on where they go. And based on where they go, you can make a lot of assumptions that they could be a potential candidate for orthopedic care down the road. Like if they're spending time in a CrossFit gym or they're spending time in known hiking and nature trails. Maybe they spend time at skate parks, uh, like teenage kids, or maybe they, they go to a boys and girls clubs or they go into football and rec field. Maybe they play ultimate Frisbee, those types of things. There's assumptions there that with activity comes potentials for orthopedic needs that could arise. And so you can add them to audiences based on them going to these specific places and then deliver ads in video form, still form, a bunch of different mediums to stay top of mind for them, for these active lifestyle people until an, a non-acute orthopedic care need arises, especially on the walk-in clinic side. The other side is it can be really, really effective for remarketing. And I talked about this in the, the recent webinar. There is and has been a lot of gray area in the remarketing space, especially there's been a lot of health systems in particular that have gotten in trouble 
as of late, specifically with social ads and Facebook advertising using the Facebook pixel to remarket. You can go on Becker's or you can just do some searching around and look at some of this information. So it's been touch and go because there's a lot of perception out there. Like if I go to a website as a patient and then I'm starting to get remarketed, especially for specific care ailments, is where does, P, where does it cross the line into PHI? And what I mean is if a patient goes to a website, they submit a patient form that contains PHI, that information could potentially be shared back to Facebook. And then what is Facebook doing with that? We don't know. And there's been obviously a lot of issues in the past about that. So with patient data and security being what it is, there's been a lot of fears over remarketing. And that's where um, a DSP platform or just remarketing on other channels that are purely based on you coming to the website and then going elsewhere and not on an exchange of information is by far, in a way, the safest bet, especially with everything that's been going on right now. So that's what we do for our clients is we are taking our remarketing off of platforms like social media that are in a gray area right now in terms of what information they can and can't see, what information um, and what they're doing with it. And obviously the healthcare industry wanting to make sure PHI stays very protected. Something like a DSP platform can be of great value to still allow you to provide remarketing, which is some of the lowest hanging fruit and some of the most inexpensive lead generation and patient appointment booking without having to worry about some of these lawsuit issues that have been presenting themselves as of late. But you can still get in front of that patient, again, purely based on them having come to the website and then you remarketing them and there is complete anonymized data and there is no exchange of data in terms of if a patient appointment is submitted, there is no exchange of information into any of these platforms. So any remarketing that is done is based purely on behavior and not on data. And that's what you want to stay away from because that's where people have gotten into trouble is basing remarketing on any type of data exchange. And that's where PHI violations can come into play. And then probably one of the other big things, as I mentioned, is the OTT CTV stuff and investing in a multi-channel video based approach to make a bigger impact across multiple different channels, multiple different mediums. OTT CTV is kind of the channels that you can deliver video content through. Most people have heard of Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, Roku, Chromecast, so on and so forth. It keeps going and you're watching on-demand television. Maybe you're watching one of your favorite series and then it, call it every 10, 15 minutes, a set of three to four ads somewhere in the 30 to 60 seconds in length come up and you see that maybe it's for a local Honda dealer or it's for a national brand, but it could be a ton of different things. Well, you can position your orthopedic group based on where these people are located, based on some of the places they visited, like I mentioned with the geofencing in the past. So say I go to play ultimate Frisbee with my buddies on a rec field that we're geofencing, I could go home and sit down and start watching something on my Apple TV. And I could see my local ortho group with a video ad about their ortho urgent care or about their knee and back specialists they have at the practice, whatever it may be. And so then I'm staying top of mind based on my activities and the things that I'm doing out in my area. And then I'm seeing multi-channel, omni-channel coverage in terms of visibility from your clinic. And that's another thing that can be really effective. And then you're kind of in a really good touch point loop in terms of being able to market to these patients, stay top of mind without being too invasive and be there when a need does arise for whatever it is from an orthopedic standpoint that you can do to take care of them or physical therapy, any of those things. And then probably last up before I close out is tracking. Tracking is obviously really, really critical in terms of proving out some of the things that we've been talking about from a strategic standpoint that they're working or not. One of the big things is I think self-patient appointments that has become I think something you really need if you're not doing already, and there's definitely been a lag just in the healthcare industry in general, patients really want self patient appointment capabilities. There's a lot out there between PM systems, EMR and EHRs. There's also some self patient appointment standalone apparatuses that are really, really good out there as well. 
but that will do a couple of things. It makes it really frictionless in the patient marketing funnel with all these different things we've been talking about that if you finally you're ranking well or you're delivering the right types of ads and you're getting them there, they can go ahead and find an appointment and get it booked. And I know there's there's a, usually a lot of hesitancy, especially with ortho surgeons being one of the more busy people around is opening their schedule to like this whirlwind of crazy chaos and them losing control. Um, there's definitely a balance there. The admin team, this is where y'all can really come in. Again, with a really good scheduler, you can protect those times and you can roll it out simply. Like give me one day a month to start out and then two days and then one day a week and then two days a week as they get more and more comfortable. And again, with these different things, you can do a better job filtering down the right types of patients for the ortho surgeons and ortho doctors in particular to be able to see. It'll comfort them and help them along the way. But adopting self-patient appointment scheduling is really going to help the practice. One of the biggest things that I would urge you is in the perfect scenario, and I think they're coming, but there's not a lot that still offer it, is your self-appoint appointment scheduler, having the capability of adding tag manager, Google Analytics for those types of things to the appointment process. That's really, really important because otherwise you're going blind is when they take you off to this third party scheduler on another website and then bring you back to the website after they book, you lose all that patient data. When I say patient data, what I mean is patient conversion data in terms of like knowing how they came to the website. Was it from like a Google ad? And then knowing if they actually booked an appointment or not. When you take them off to a third party site that can't continue that story, then you know that they came to the website, but you don't know if they booked or they didn't book. And again, it's not about an exchange of PHI information. It's more about conversion tracking and conversion analytics of did they make it to a thank you page after they booked or didn't they? Or can you fire an event in GA4 right when they hit the appointment book button and they self check out to know, hey, we drove this lead from Google Ads campaign. They came to the website and they booked a patient appointment in the EMR system. And then we have an idea of the cost to generate leads, the cost to generate appointments and all of that different type of stuff. The other side is phone tracking. Dynamic phone tracking is another really big thing is a big chunk still want to call, whether you're using a call center model or call answering at each location, call tracking will be really critical too, because then you can see first time or repeat callers. You can see where they booking appointments or potentially refilling scripts, depending on what type of call software that you're using, but at least at a baseline level, you can see, did they call from ads? Did they call from Google business profiles? Did they call from organic search? Is that growing month over month? How many are repeat? How many are new callers? Uh, all of those different types of information, which is critical information to know this, the success of the campaigns and when it's the right time to double down on things that are working or potentially look at other strategies. So I really appreciate you. I was always listening to the Patient Convert podcast. I hope you found some really helpful 2023 and beyond marketing strategy tips for all of you ortho practices that are out there. Even if you're not an ortho, we work with multiple other subspecialties. All of this stuff, for the most part, outside of some nuanced things like the urgent care side of things are really tried and true things that do work extremely well between search ads, DSP platforms, programmatic display advertising, multi-location SEO, content development, all of these things are things that whether you're in orthopedics or not, you need to be focused on. But if you're in orthopedics, we've seen this time and again for the clients that we work with day in and day out be super, super effective to bringing patients through the door in the local environments around each of the locations you have. If you are coming to AAOE and you're listening to this um, as it gets out there, I think this will actually drop on Friday while we'll be on the conference floor at AOE Orlando 2023. Definitely stop by our booth, booth 308. And again, as always, thank you for listening to us and make sure you go to entropy.com for a free practice assessment. If you are looking to grow, you actually can schedule some time with me personally on my calendar. So I'd love to be able to talk to you about some growth strategies for your practice. And if you're on LinkedIn, make sure you connect with me as well. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to today's latest episode of the Patient Convert Podcast. Don't 
forget to subscribe and review on your favorite podcast platform. We are on Apple, iTunes, Google, Stitcher, and Spotify, or you can sign up to receive the latest episode via email. Just check it out on my agency website or my personal website. And if you are looking for more amazing healthcare marketing information or just to engage, check us out at entropy.com. And for any of my amazing physician liaisons out there interested in growing their physician referrals or learning the strategies that it takes to build highly engaged physician referral networks, check out my website, kellynot.com, where I have free webinars, free downloads, and of course, my online physician liaison training course, Physician Liaison University. And as always, I'm a huge believer in connecting, engaging, and supporting one another. And the best way we can do that is networking. And I always, always connect with you guys on social media. And one of my biggest social media platforms is LinkedIn. So feel free to connect with me there on LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter at Kelly Knott. And thank you guys again for listening to the Patient Convert Podcast with your host, Kelly Knott.